I often get asked uh, what's the difference between a 1950 and a 1950 T. Uh, actually, uh, I've been requested to uh, do a video to explain the difference. So I'm going to do just that and with the help of my YouTube friend Burning Dinosaurs who has a 1950T. I do not have a 1950T. So we'll start with the 1950 since it's what I've got. It was the evolution of the 1900, I guess you could put it. Um, Oliver had been using the Detroit diesel or the GM diesel uh, two-stroke engines since the Super 99, which had a 371. The 990 had a 371. When the 1800 and 1900 came out, the 53 series were pretty new. I don't know the exact release date on those, but uh, from the get-go, the 1900 was powered by the 453 Detroit diesel. Or back then, I think it was still GM diesel. But someone who's a little more uh, up on that can probably say something in the comments if you could. But it's a two-stroke diesel, and that means much like your weed whacker or chainsaw, Every time a piston comes up, fuel is injected and it fires and it goes down. Now, a lot of people don't understand that uh, it has regular crankcase oil like a four-stroke engine. And that's why it has this blower. There are slots in the piston sleeves. So as the piston comes down, goes past those and the blower can blow air into the chamber. The exhaust valves on top open up and the blower is for scavenging. It blows that exhaust air up and out through the exhaust valves and clean air in. So then as the piston comes up and closes off those ports in the side, the holes in the side of the sleeves, then compression begins and it gets up towards the top. Injector uh, does its thing, squirts fuel in, ignition happens and the cycle happens over again. Comes down, get your power stroke, Piston comes past the slots, uh, exhaust valves open, blower blows air in, exhaust out. And so that's why they sound like they're screaming. They're constantly uh, firing. This is only 212 cubic inches. So a lot of horsepower for a compact tractor. I think the official number is 105 horsepower for the 1950. They scream. They, because of that whole two stroke, uh, Firing every time it comes up, you're hearing twice as many uh, explosions or firings of the engine, and so you end up uh, hearing twice as many. It just they sound like they're screaming. But this tractor is rated at 2,400 RPM on the PTO, and it actually doesn't quite turn that. It'll turn just over 2,400. Uh, no load supposed to be 2,600 roughly. 2,600 RPM and then when you put it under load you draw it down to 2,400 RPM to check your horsepower. So in 1964 the 50 series was introduced. Not too many were built in 64. This particular one is a 66 model year and it was uh, Oliver's big horse and generally with uh, their higher horsepower tractors Oliver sourced out an engine uh, in this case, it was the Detroit Diesel 453. And when they originally built the tub for these for the 1900, um, I think they had an idea that they were going to be doing four-wheel drive, but they um, it was mostly designed to be a Wheatland tractor. Uh, no three-point hitch, just a, a, a pulling machine to pull large implements out in the Midwest, or not the Midwest, more of the Western Prairie states and wheat country. They're loud. Some people uh, would say obnoxious. Some people would say awesome. I lean more towards the awesome myself. Hopefully that wind ain't sounding too bad. So in 1967, Oliver introduced the 1950T. And the main difference between the 1950 and the 1950T is the engine. The Detroit diesel was getting to be an expensive engine and Oliver felt they could build something in-house for less money. And well, they knew they could. And uh, they have taken the 310 engine that had first started in the 1800. They had uh, updated it with direct injection for the 1750. And so for the 1950T, 
They added a turbocharger. The 1950T was Oliver's first turbocharged tractor, and that's where the T comes in the name. Uh, they added an oil cooler because the turbo puts a lot more heat into the engine oil. Engine oil is used to cool the turbo, so the heat goes into the oil, so you need to get the heat back out of the oil, or the oil breaks down quicker. So a six-cylinder Oliver Waukesha diesel, turbocharged, and I believe they were right around 105 horsepower. They did overlap for a short time there. You could get a 1950 or a 1950T, and they... Uh, the. The 1950T has the honor of being the first model to get the three-speed over an underdrive unit. Not all of them had it. You could get it without any power shift. You could get it with the hydropower two-speed, or you could get it with the over and under three-speed. The 1950 was only ever offered with the either a straight shaft or the two-speed hydropower unit. And from what I've been told, the main reason was they didn't really have a place for an oil cooler there's the Detroit diesel has a fairly large uh, fuel cooler up here and then there's the hydraulic oil cooler and that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for a uh, cooler for the over and under which was air to oil cooled instead of uh, engine oil heat transfer like right there they did continue making the 1950 in the industrial version uh, which if it was four-wheel drive it was the 4115 if it was two-wheel drive it was the 2115 up until 1974 when it came to hydraulics and rear end the two tractors were almost identical either one could be ordered as a uh, two-wheel drive four-wheel drive row crop or wheatland one place that the uh, t had an advantage with the row crop was they actually had a row crop tub for the Waukesha engine. They never modified the tub for the Detroit diesel which is a Wheatland. On Oliver's Wheatland tractors the engines sit level in the tub. On the row crop tractors the engine sits at a, about a five degree angle and they they use the same transmission they just adjust the uh, cut of the back of the frame to uh, compensate so that the engine's in line and what that does is kick the engine up and then it gets more room under the front for the front axle and more clearance uh, one of the things that seems to drive people nuts about the 1950 uh, this one doesn't do too bad with having the terror tires but generally the front end kind of noses up in the air and it's because the front axle there's just only so much room under there the differential just misses a frame on these and so they couldn't tuck it up any higher and they probably could have changed gear ratios and put smaller tires on the front to level the tractor out but then you're going to lose traction because you got real small wheels up front so they just uh they rolled with it the 1950t much like this 1955 the 1950T, the engine on the row crops, had that roughly five degree angle going up. That made it so they could uh, cut a little more out of the bottom of the frame down there, tuck the uh, front axle up in there, and the tractors ran a little more level. Both tractors had triple disc brakes on each side. Both tractors could be ordered with or without three-point hitch. Um, Herman here has the external remote detent and uh, hydraulic system no three-point hitch uh, the t's could go either way the the 1950s could go the either way uh, one thing though you'll notice is the dash is different and the 1950t uses what i call the 1600 1650 dash pedestal and what that did you can see Clutch is suspended here on this shaft. This is for the brake. And the brakes are suspended up here as well. That gave room for a battery box down, down below. And it also, um, let's see, it used a different fuel tank.
as we can see on Herman here, the brake pedals come down through the floor, have a pivot back here. One works the right brake, and then the shaft that goes through the transmission works the left brake. Uh, the 1950 fuel tank goes in and goes up over the engine here because there was room for the air cleaners up front even though it has dual air cleaners well the 1950t has a long engine it's got a six cylinder so it come up into the front more there wasn't room to put air cleaners up in there by the radiator so they put them in above the valve cover well then you need a different fuel tank so you use the 1650 dash which used the fuel tank that stopped at the back of the engine that gives you room above the engine for the dual air cleaners late 1950t's had a single air cleaner burning dinosaurs 1950t here that he's uh, demonstrating for us has the dual air cleaners this is uh, Herman, the 1950 serial number tag. As you can see, it starts with 295. The first generation of 1950 started with 195. Then at some point, they made modifications, and essentially what was the second generation of 1950s changed to a 295. Eventually it was 395. Uh, I think 495. I'm not sure what the industrials went to. As you see here on... Uh, burning dinosaur serial number tag it's 399 and that's the difference how you can tell from the serial number tag the 95 is a 1950 the 99 is a 1950t even though this transmission as far as let's uh, on your serial number tag so the top line here is your model number your specification number so we can see here 295, this is the second generation 1950. The first digit after the dash is your front axle equipment. Eight is agricultural front wheel assist. Two is diesel, which is the only option the 1950 or the 1950T had. So you, you won't see a one here, which was gasoline, or three, which was LP gas. And then these last three digits encode everything pretty much everything else uh, tire options pto options seat options and we haven't figured them out just because there are so many of them then on the next line we got your serial number and all oliver tractors were sequential serial numbers there are some gaps in there where they jumped up for reasons they had but herman here is 175303 and then after the dash is 415 that's his transmission code which is a 1950 front wheel assist transmission now the next tractor down the line probably was a 1950 but 175304 could have been an 1850 it could have been a 1750 but whatever tractor was down the line next got the next number so you can't just take uh the first number of the, the year on an oliver and figure out subtract the beginning of the year and the end of the year and say oh there was this many 1950s made because there's other models in there as well and once again while like i mentioned once in a while they did actually jump over a block of serial numbers when they made some changes or something like that it made it easier for service to start at an even number people like even numbers the 1950 and the 1950t same PTO unit. They both were rated at 2400 RPM. Both mechanical linkage. Uh, both could have this heavy duty wide swinging drawbar. This is essentially the industrial drawbar, but you could opt into it for the uh, ag tractor. So there's your differences 1950 Detroit diesel powered, 1950T. Oliver Waukesha turbocharged six cylinder 310 cubic inch engine. They had to have different front frames because of the different engines. And then there was differences in the dash to accommodate the different fuel tank. 
that moved both battery boxes down under the platform instead of having one battery up in the dash like this one does both could have fender tanks both could have front wheel assist both could be wheatlands narrow uh yeah you could get a 1950 as a narrow front the 1950t could even be ordered as a terra tire tractor i've seen pictures of at least one with this same wheel setup that herman has any of the uh tractors from the 1650 on up to the 2150 could be ordered with terra tires since burning dinosaurs uh 1950t is not running i thought we would uh Get you the next best thing and i'll fire up the 1955 i've got to move it to get the uh, planner out and clean that up and put it away so uh same engine 310 turbocharged uh, just the newer version of the 1950t when the 55 series came out the 1955 replaced the t uh, so for all the intents and purposes as far as the engine goes it's the same machine We'll get you some of that nice 310 turbo sound. Well, it wouldn't be much of a video if we didn't have the comparison of that Detroit diesel sound.
to thank Burning Dinosaurs for taking time to give me some footage of a 1950T since I don't have one. And I hope everybody got something out of this and enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching.